Hi there, Rayleigh Bacon here. This is our third session in the Electroculture Foundation series. This one is rather interesting. If you've been looking for some of the science behind electroculture, less of the woo, more of the discovery, the mechanistic factors at play, well, this is an introduction. There's a moment before the storm, not the storm itself, but right before it, when the sky holds its breath, when the birds go silent, when something inside you, deep in the bones, behind the eyes, below conscious thought, starts to hum. You feel it, don't you? That charge, that low, invisible tension curling through the air like a wire just beginning to spark. You step outside, and the breeze carries something sharp and metallic. Your skin tingles, your joints ache, your senses sharpen like a tuning fork struck against stone. That feeling is electricity. And your body isn't the only one tuned in. So are plants. This isn't poetry. It's biology. And it's the beginning of everything electroculture stands on. By now you've seen the thread I, I keep pulling. The earth is not just alive, it's electrically alive. From the fiery breath of the sun to the pulsing heartbeat of the Schumann resonance, this planet is wired, wrapped in fields, charged with currents, bathed in a rhythmic song of light and magnetism. And plants? They're not just surviving inside this field. They're dancing with it. They are built for it. Let me tell you what I saw. You see, back when I was running our greenhouse, we had a microgreen business with edible flowers, salad mixes. We had our operation dialed in tight. Dozens of restaurants relied on our weekly harvests. Well over 30, in fact. A couple distributors, a 200-kilometer radius. We were doing well before COVID. We had every variable tracked, light, temperature, humidity, pH, nutrients. <laughs> no guesswork, just precision. So when the patterns started showing up, I, I couldn't dismiss them. Every time a thunderstorm rolled through, even without a drop of rain, of course, my greenhouse protected my crops from direct rain, I would still seal, I would still see a shift. The leaves, glossy. The color, deeper. The stems, thicker, straighter, more alive. And here's what really stunned me. The disease pressure vanished if not for a few days. If you've ever grown microgreens, you know the fragility. It's like raising newborns in a crowded room. One wrong move, too much moisture, not enough airflow, and damping off takes hold like wildfire. But after lightning storms, hmm, nothing, no spread no rot, no fungal bloom. And we're not talking about rain bringing down nitrates here. This was a closed system. No outdoor exposure, just ambient electricity in the atmosphere. That was the crack in the wall. Because I wasn't watching a nutrient effect. I was watching an energy effect. That's when it all began to shift for me, personally, 
See, I had been taught, like most growers, that plants respond to what you feed them. To matter. To molecules. But what if that's only part of the story? What if plants are also responding to fields, frequencies, voltages? What if they've what if they are built to detect and respond to energy directly? Here's the thing. The science is catching up. We're learning that roots grow toward electrical charge that stems and leaves align with the Earth's magnetic field. That fungi don't just shuttle nutrients underground. They carry signals that trees act like antennas with voltage climbing from root to canopy. That sap flows not just through pressure, but through charge separation and structured water dynamics. You're not just growing matter when you grow a plant. You're working with a living circuit. This isn't just theory anymore. It's evidence, repeatable, measurable. And when you start to see it, really see it, you realize electroculture doesn't invent anything new. It simply tunes you back into what nature has already perfected. So yes, this above segment was indeed a teaser, but it's not fluff. It's the doorway. And what's coming next will change the way you grow forever. The next chapter, The Mechanisms at Play, Electrotropism, Magnetotropism, and Structured Water, is where we crack open the real engine beneath electroculture. Let's break that down just a little, shall we? Electrotropism is the way roots grow toward a negative electrical charge. In plain terms, roots can feel voltage and they actually move toward it, like water finding its level, or like your body leaning toward warmth on a cold day. Magnetotropism? Well, that refers to how stems and leaves, and even roots, orient themselves to the Earth's magnetic field. Yep, plants have their own kind of internal compass, no, they don't use it to migrate, like birds, and their own magnetoreceptivity. They do use it to grow stronger, straighter, and more resilient. Structured water? That's always been considered woo, right? Hexagonal water? Marketing fluff, perhaps, trying to sell expensive machines? Perhaps. But that's changing. Structured water is now getting rebranded. It's called easy water. Isn't it isn't your average H2O? It forms near hydrophilic, which means water-loving surfaces, inside plants and behaves differently, more viscous, more organized, and crucially, electrically charged. Think of it as nature's battery fluid. Some people have called it living water. It's the water that seems to emerge at springs out of the ground. It's the water that bathes our DNA. It's the interstitial fluid of our cells. It's the thin veneer surface of a pond exposed to the sun. It's one of the keys to understanding how energy flows inside the plant and why some growing conditions create explosive vitality while others don't. In the next chapter, we'll also get into how electrical gradients drive nutrient flow and cell communication, like voltage-powered conveyor belts for growth, and why mitochondria and membranes rely on ions to do their job. These aren't just chemistry labs, they're bioelectric engines. How mycorrhizal fungi from nature's underground internet, they don't just share nutrients, they send messages electrically. Trees as vertical circuits, 
their roots as anodes, their canopies as cathodes, real-time energy exchange happening above your head every single day? Does that sound a bit technical? Maybe, but here's a little promise. Secret, perhaps, because you've made it this far. I'll make it simple. The upcoming chapter is designed for clarity. Every concept will be broken down without watering it down. You won't need a physics degree to follow along. Just curiosity and a little bit of wonder. And trust me, you'll walk away not only understanding some of the foundations behind why electroculture works, but why it changes everything. Because this isn't just about boosting your yields. Remember that. It's about seeing life itself through a different lens. A charged lens. And if I had you when I first started talking about electrical gradients and you're excited and you want more, well, Scroll down to the bottom after listening to this. Click on that link because there's more coming down the pipeline. And I hope you're ready for it.